First time to have an SEC team in the BCS championship in how long? The transfer portal is kind of outrageous. And the college football bowl games have not really been that interesting. And KJ Jefferson has finally found a home. Let's talk about it here on Clay Scott Report. All right, guys, I hope you guys are enjoying the freaking bowl games. Me, I have, and I've been enjoying all the bowls. I've been predicting most of the teams that have won to win. Um, I watched today. Bama went down to Michigan. Um, crazy, man. But I hope all is having a happy, I hope all had a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. This video is dropping today on the video is made on the first. I don't know if I'm gonna drop it on the first or not. But yeah, man. Happy New Year's, Merry Christmas, and so forth and so on, guys. But I ain't gonna hold y'all long, man. We got a few things to talk about in today's video. So, man, with that being said, let's go ahead and jump right into this video. Let's go ahead and talk about the college football bowl games. Um, and really, I can really talk about both the bowl games and the portal because the bowl games are affected by the portal being open so early. And it makes it to where people can either transfer out and things like that. Like, none of the bowl games before today was really worth watching. I mean, most of the bowl games was, were blowouts. And it, it, it wasn't even fun to watch. You know, the Oregon game, the, uh, who else? The Oregon game wasn't really fun to watch. I mean, not Oregon, I'm sorry. Ole Miss game. See, I mean, like, let's just, just go, th go through the bowl games real quick. Just really, really quick. All right, so just like I said, I mean, these games we ain't really care about. The Toledo, Wyoming, that was 16-15, decent game. But look at that, Auburn and Maryland, 31-13. Ole Miss, Penn State, that wasn't a bad one. 25-38, Georgia, Florida State, 63-3. You know, Memphis, Memphis wasn't a bad game. Memphis and Iowa State, Kentucky, Clemson, that wasn't a bad one. Notre Dame and Oregon State, 40-8. Uh, Ohio State and uh, Missouri, 14-3. Watching that game was a lot worse than it actually turned out to be. Rutgers and Miami, that wasn't a bad game. Boston College beat SMU. Kansas State beat NC State. You know, Arizona, Oklahoma. West, West Virginia over North Carolina. Tulane loses to West Virginia. I mean, Virginia Tech. Oklahoma State over Texas A&M. USC blows out Louisville, 42-28. Kansas beats UNLV, 49-36. Texas State beat Rice. Uh, Bowling Green loses to Minnesota. Of course, Carolina beats San Jose State. Utah loses to Northwestern. South Alabama beats um, Eastern Michigan. You know, just to me, the bowl games were just not that interesting. Due to the fact of people sitting out, the transfer portal being open, being able to transfer in the middle of bowl games, in the middle of the in the middle of the playoffs and stuff still going on. So with that being said, the portal got to get a grasp next season. It has to, because if that's the case, the bowl games are just gonna keep getting worse and worse and worse and Nobody's going to care to watch any of the bowl games until today when it's the playoff teams playing and we feel like it's worth watching because, you know, everybody is actually going to be playing. And that's like I said, that's something I feel like they're going to get the hold, they're going to have to get a hold on because these games were not fun to watch up until today. Okay. So enough about, you know, the playoff, the uh, college football playoff and the transfer portal. Now let's talk about KJ Jefferson. As you guys have seen, KJ has finally signed with you. CF, Gus Malzahn, has came in and swooped KJ Jefferson out of the portal. And he's bringing him to be a knight down in Florida. I think that is a perfect fit. I, I either thought KJ was going to go to TCU or he was either going to go to UCF like he did. UCF went 6-7. and seven. Last season, they lost in the Union Home uh, Bowl. 
to Georgia Tech. But as I said, a lot of people sitting out, um, people transferring and things like that. So it played a big part in their record. You know what I'm saying? This year, you know, UCF's record is really not how they played. They, UCF really was a good football team. You know, if you look at all the games they lost, they lost to Kansas State by seven. No, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. By 13. They lost to Baylor by one. Kansas kind of handled them pretty good. Lost to Oklahoma by three. I mean, by two. Lost to West Virginia pretty handily. Uh, beat Cincinnati. Beat Oklahoma State. Lost to Texas Tech by one. And lost to Houston by a touch, by two touchdowns. So I'm seeing like them adding KJ. They had a decent quarterback at Plumlee this year. But them adding KJ come in, you know, he had that versatile versatility like he did with us. Um, I think he fits a Gus Malzahn offense just right. I mean, I don't really think Gus could have found a better suited quarterback, you know. Then KJ Jefferson, he runs the read option well. Uh, he can throw it downfield pretty good. Um, he can give you the tough, hard-earned yards. The only thing that's concerning about KJ is can he read the defenses of Gus Miles on his offense? You know what I'm saying? You got to be able to read the defense as a quarterback. A lot of people talk about how KJ cannot read as a quarterback. And um, it has shown at time because his he's going through his progressions and he kind of sometimes holds the ball too long. Me personally, KJ stats show that he's a pretty darn good quarterback. Per per completion percentage over 60%. All three, four years he's been playing and starting quarterback for the Arkansas Razorbacks, he has not had a elf in completion percentage since. You know, which is really good. Like I say, from 2021 to 23, 67 complete position rate, 68 complete percentage rate, completion rate, and 64 completion rate. I mean, KJ is a darn good quarterback. He takes care of the ball. His most, he threw four and 21, five and 22, and eight and 23. And we all know what happened in Arkansas. Eight interceptions, had a horrible offensive line, trying to get rid of the ball. And he threw off, every year he threw over 2,000 yards. I think he's going to work really, really well in Gus Miles on offense. I really do. So let's go check and see, you know, what did Gus quarterback throw for. That'll give you a good idea on what. You know, he could do. Plumlee threw for 2,200 yards. Last season, he threw for 2,500 yards. And it ain't really that big of a difference between how much he throws and run. I mean, but how much he throws than it was like Arkansas was. Because, like I said, he threw 161 of 256, 62% completion rate. Okay. And then, uh, Let's check his, they got this Russian stats on here. Check Russian. Stats. And he rushed 154 times. Well, I'm sorry, sorry, Ole Miss. I did this quarterback from Ole Miss. He rushed this year 106 for 505. Okay, last year he rushed for 159, 862. 159 rushes for 862. So it's about the same like it was at Arkansas. You know, a lot of those probably was, you know, things he did with his, you know, just um, being able to get outside the pocket and make a play. He threw for 2,200 yards, 15 touchdowns, eight interceptions. No, him and KJ wasn't too far off this year. You know, I think he's gone this year. Uh, that's why KJ's coming in to take over that spot. So that's going to really help. You know, KJ come in, you know, he'll be able to throw the ball and also run the ball like he's been doing. And last but not least, guys, let's talk about today's game, game one, uh, Alabama versus Michigan. I was picking Michigan. I was picking Alabama to win the game, but a Michigan just would not seem to let go. Michigan just would not seem to give up. Michigan just would not seem to hang it up. They just wouldn't. I mean, Michigan was in it the whole time. I mean, it's like they just kept coming and pounding and. When their, eye, when their back was against the wall, they just found a way to 
like like push yourself off of it and fight through adversity. You know, let's 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 matter of fact, let's talk about this game for a little bit. To me, this was a defensive game. This was a defensive game. I mean, both defenses came in, played lights out. The first four quarters only put up 20 points by both teams. You know, Miro was 16 to 23, 16 passing yards, no touchdowns. JJ was 17 to 27, 221, three TDs, no interceptions, and nobody threw any interceptions. Okay. Nobody rushed over 100 yards. You know, Chrome had 19 for 83. McClellan. 14 for 87, Mill Road 21 for 63, McCarthy 3 for 25. Nobody caught for over 100 yards. You know, Wilson from Michigan caught 4 for 73, Bond 4 for 47, Burden 4 for 21, Morris 2 for 45. Nobody was really separated in anything. This game was really packed in. This game was really even. This game was really what I thought it was going to be. I wish I would have made a video beforehand before they play but i really felt coming in that this was going to be one of the best games and absolutely was to me the best game so far out of all the playoffs well the is what's kind of going on right now as i'm making this video but out of all the bowl games this one right here was the best bowl game to me two hard no football teams going head to head and i mean this was smash mouth football it absolutely was um crumb had one rushing touchdown and McClellan had two rushing touchdowns. Like I said, Miro did not throw a touchdown at all. But I believe he ran for did he run for a touchdown? No. Crump, McClellan had both touchdowns. Both. Okay. And like I said, Crum had one. And who else had a touchdown? Wilson had a touchdown. Morris had a touchdown. So I mean this was a defensive touchdown. This was a defensive touchdown. This was a defensive game for sure. I mean both teams were just heavy and hitting hard. I can't wait to watch the I can't wait to watch the interviews on, you know, coaches, the players. You know, um Miro had a shot there at the end to win it, fourth and three on their on, on the three yard line. I mean, but it just it, to me it was a bad play. Everybody was crowded in the box. They kinda of figured that was gonna put a ball in Miro's hand and that's what they done and Michigan was ready for it. They stuffed it. Really got hit by his own player. His own player hit him. You know, the, the, I got to give credit to um, Michigan defensive line. They played lights out. Michigan D-line played lights out. I mean, they sacked the quarterback. They sacked the quarterback three, six times today. They got they had six sacks to Alabama one. Me, okay. Alabama had one sack. Michigan had six. I'm calling it right now. Michigan is going to win the PCS championship. I think it's going to be Michigan and Texas. I could be wrong, but I do think it's going to be Michigan. Well, I'll take it back. I'm going to say, I'm going to say, I'm going to call it Michigan and Texas is my prediction on the, the uh, BCS championship. It just, to me, Michigan is a complete football team. Harbaugh has did his thing. You know, he had to sit out earlier, three games. Um, but them guys just stayed right together. Like I said, man, it was so many times Alabama could have put the game away. But it's just, Michigan don't stop. They got the heart. And uh, they can't. They're not. They're not afraid of anybody. You know what I'm saying? They, Michigan is. Michigan is here to play football, and Michigan is really darn good. And I got Michigan winning. Winning it all. January first, 2024. Clay Cox said Michigan is going to win it all. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video, man. Be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel, and stay tuned for more videos on Clay Scouting Report. That's all.